Hello and welcome. In this video I'll be going through the process of making a paper cutting of Matsumoto Castle. As usual, I'm working from a picture that I took in Japan. In this case, I was lucky enough to visit in 2011. Uh, I took a whole lot of pictures. This is the first time I've actually used one of them for any artwork. Um, so this essentially is one of the pictures I took. I just printed it out on the computer and then took it um, to get it blown up on a photocopier. So for this particular piece, um, I'll be working in a fairly big scale. Bought some larger frames, so I custom made this one to fit that frame. This is the size I'll be working from. It's about 34 centimeters by 52 centimeters, which is about 14 inches by 21 inches. And so this is the drawing. Um, so it's two 11 by 7s taped together in order to get the size. Um, so I'm all done the drawing at this point. So you can kind of see the, the black lines there. And after I'm done the black layer, I will be adding the colored pieces of paper. So you can kind of get a bit of an idea of where the drawing is on that side. So for this particular piece, just as an aside, um, I basically got into art by drawing Japanese castles in high school, and coincidentally enough, this castle was the second drawing I did. And so this is that pencil drawing that I made. This was from a book of Japanese architecture, and again, just lucky enough to go and visit myself in person. Uh, I guess that would be nine years ago now. Um, so at this point, from the drawing, from this drawing, um, I'll just be attaching this black piece of paper in behind. So I'll just be taping those together, and then I'll be cutting through both layers to make the black layer to which I can attach the colored pieces in behind. So I'm about four hours into the cutting process at this point. So at this point I'm about six hours into the cutting process. I just wanted to go over some of the details as to how I go about cutting something of this size. In general, I um, work from the middle out and more, a bit more importantly than that is to work on the smallest pieces first. So as you can see, I've done all the, the stones on the bottom there. And so these are small enough that I could do all of those at the beginning. So I finished all of those off first. And then I moved on to some of the side of the castle here. So again, these ones are small enough. I can kind of go through all of those first and still have the, the structure of the paper kind of keep itself together. It won't warp or get wobbly or anything as I'm moving it around. And so with these I would do kind of sections here and there rather as instead of uh, start from one side and then go all the way across just get really monotonous really quickly and with the, the side paneling here you can see it's kind of done some sections here and there. So I would do maybe that part Go over there and do that part and then back and forth rather than go all the way across at once. And um, yeah, so again, just kind of mixing it up a little bit, doing some of the cross hatching there and then the paneling on the side, kind of going across that way. So with this many tiny uh, parts to cut, I don't really have to stick to the, the middle and going out um, just because they're so small. 
going to be going into a little bit of detail here in terms of how I do the cutting. So this is the knife I use to do that. Bought it in Japan so the blade is on a bit of a sharper angle or more of an angle than your typical X-Acto knife so it allows me to get into the, the really small pieces there. And so with something that has the same pattern kind of over and over like these ones, the squares, I wouldn't do one square at a time. To save a bit of time, I would typically do a few of them once, do all the vertical cuts that way. Those ones. small the pieces are that I'm cutting. So the reason I have to, with these ones, I'm, I'm cutting straight down that way, but <clears throat> to cut them out, the reason I have to flip it around like that is these ones have to be on an angle inward. As you can see, it kind of pop out a little bit there when I do that. If I were to do go that way on this side, it wouldn't come out as easily, it'd still be kind of attached there. But if I cut it inward this way, it pops right out. So it's not a huge deal if, uh, if you're not doing a very big piece or there are not a lot of cuts, but um, with the amount of cuts that I'm doing here, if I had to pull out every single piece, it would probably double the amount of time it took, and it would also mean that each little piece, there'd be a tiny, tiny tear there, which doesn't make a huge difference if it's once in a while, but if every single piece is like that, um, you would be able to notice it in the overall finished product. And so for these small ones here, um, kind of getting <laughs> towards the point where it's almost physically impossible to cut them, so you can see how small that is. So as long as I'm physically able to cut these, I can do it. Right. So I'm not used to working with this right in front of my face here. See those ones have to be really exact. Yeah, any smaller than that, and it just, especially in something, in a section like this, all these connecting lines here would just fall apart as well, so this is about the smallest. I suppose, because after that, like I said, it would just kind of fall apart. So I'm almost done the paper cutting at this point. Um, just have to do a little bit around the edges here. So with something this big, I'll usually leave it connected and just parts around the edges there just so when I'm moving it around it still kind of holds together. So right now I'm just going to finish cutting it off the edge parts there. So I've done it all down there.
taking those other pieces off just to kind of keep track of where I've gone and where I hadn't. attached it uh, just kind of gets a little more fragile and um, a little more worried as I move it around that things like that will happen but if I put that there it'll bunch up don't want to get those delicate ends there damaged at all so So with these parts here as well, um, usually I'll cut an entire piece out like at the same time so it's easy to keep track of where I've, where the edges are, I guess, where I cut. So with these ones where I've cut a portion out and then come back later, it's really important to kind of find right exactly where I left off so there's no, so the whole cut, the whole piece looks like one smooth cut. So I'll have to flip it over and take the tape off, but you can see there's the drawing and the, the paper cutting. So I'm finished the black layer of the paper cutting at this point. As you can see, I've cut out all the excess paper. I'm just going to take the drawing off of the actual paper cutting. So this is the piece of paper that I did the drawing on. And then this is the actual black layer of the paper cutting. So at this point I'll be adding the colored pieces. And how I do that is um, I will take this and get it photocopied the exact same size, I won't um, make it any bigger or smaller so that it's exactly the same. I'll be starting from a side. So with the colored pieces I start from one of the sides and then move across so that I can attach it to the 
the edge of the black paper and kind of move across and attach each piece to the previous piece. So I'm going to start with these stones over here. Again, as you can see, it's the exact same size. So I'll flip this over. So I'm going to be cutting most of the pieces. I'll be using colored paper for the sky and water. I'll likely be using uh, some watercolor that I'll make just for this. For the first piece here, so I'm just going to cut out a piece that'll fit in right there, and then I'll put it on that right there and behind. So as you can see, all these pieces have other pieces from previous uh, works that I've cut out. So this here is just a scrap piece of paper I'll be gluing on top of. I've obviously glued it on top of, put the glue on the actual black paper cutting and then use some tape on top of there as well. And then from there I'll just keep on adding pieces over top. As you can see that one fits in there perfectly in that spot. So at this point I'll be working from there and going across that way. So I'm moving along here, adding the colored pieces in behind. I'm just going to show a bit of a detail on how it is I do this. Um, so for this one, there's a lot of small uh, holes here, obviously, for all the rocks at the base of the castle. So, as I said before, this looks like from behind. In front, looks a lot nicer, obviously. But, um, so I made the photocopy of the original black paper cutting and it does line up perfectly with that so I'm going to use this paper to cut out the colored pieces that go in behind. So I'm going to be cutting this, these couple rocks here. So I have my photocopy here. I have the colored piece. So I've had a picture of the castle beside me to kind of guide the colors that I'm using. So for this one, I'll be cutting these two stones here, like this. So I just put it in behind.
So that piece there is out. And then this colored piece will fit right exactly in that same spot there. I have my scrap piece of paper here. Put it in behind. Glue. And that fits right there. So as you can see, there's a, a lot of small rocks here. This is about, it's about four or five hours uh, just doing the colored pieces. And as you can see, there's a lot of even smaller ones here. These are about a millimeter, um, I guess, side to side. So for those ones, look, obviously I'm not cutting out each tiny individual rock. So typically for those parts, I would just kind of cut them out as a group. So like these three pieces here, which is still pretty small, but uh, <clears throat> it's kind of just the way I have to do it because I don't really want to cut out every single tiny rock there. Um, it would just take a little too long. So, so I do it that way. It also, I don't, I've tried that before. It doesn't really come out that well. It's, uh, it's a bit better to have some continuity with those small ones. Otherwise it just, there's a little too much contrast. Um, so I'll finish that and then the bigger parts of the castle will take less time because this is all one color so I can just cut those out all at once. So just to give an idea of what it looks like a little bit closer, I'm going to do one of these rocks here. Photocopy, so those two are right there. Use this piece so you can see with a lot of these. I already have the shapes of the previous rocks cut out. So at this point I've completed all the paper cutting that I need to do. So I've obviously done the black layer and I've attached all the colored pieces that I'm going to do. So it looks like from behind. So you can see the colored pieces for the castle are a bit bigger. 
it's obviously easier to cut and took a lot less time than doing all the stones here. And so at this point, as I usually do, I made a watercolor for the sky and the water. This piece. And I made another kind of darker piece for the water here. So after that, I'll just be adding the mat. Well, so before that, I'll be uh, gluing the paper cutting to the watercolor. to it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.